Hello, everybody. Hey, we have Aswid, Pijor, Carolina, Cla Claribel. Jim is taking a break. Wendy and Lewis and Sheen. Uh, many uh, spiritual people find time and go into places like uh, cabins where there is no electricity whatsoever. Having turn off Wi-Fi, um, all other magnetic things, especially irradiating a magnetic blanket. So, except, I mean, again, there is like amethyst blanket, which I think is electrically electrically powered, but it is radiating something nice. I did uh, a couple sessions on amethyst blanket, so we just had a Reiki share where this blanket was placed and um, yeah, the energy flows better. The energy, it's kind of catalyzes the energy. So other, other than specially designed electric amethyst blankets, I think the, yes, electric things are disturbing. And even if you don't have anything in the house, you know, if you look on the phone, there is like Wi-Fi sources, full power, like maybe five around you, especially in big cities. So, so it's almost impossible to escape, escape um, irradiations. Um, so yeah, finding a place in the low radiation zone would be great. Uh, the best place, surprisingly, is, is in West Virginia. They have specially designated for uh, experiments for science and I think even for military. They have no radiation, but it's like mountains around. There is no no telephone, no telephone towers. But on the other hand, that is one of the darkest places I have visited. So it's it's um, weird. In any case, uh, Jim and I, we we just learned to ignore it. Uh, you can be meditating in the on, on a party. You can be uh, in a bliss, in a class, anywhere, in on a business meeting. Like where, like it is possible. It is possible. Just intended so, and this is about law of attraction and staying positive no matter what. Choose to be positive, choose choose to see the bright side, and I say the research is not conclusive. Is the radiation negative or actually positive? Some of the radiations are actually good for you and good for your spirit. So I say I grab the positive part and I intend it to be positive, and I'm not afraid of cell phones. I'm not afraid of talking on the cell phone. It connects me to other light workers. So, so why should I ignore that part, that positive part? So, um, I just I could be on the ocean, protected, but um, but otherwise, um, take it easy. Take it easy. It, it's 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 when you are like a beginner and shaky and you're not sure, maybe it's nice to purify your environment. But as soon as you feel that you you got the energy flow, learn to hold it even in the presence of destructions. There is lots of destructions like, you know, people talk negative things nearby. Just protect yourself. Intend intend not to hear that. Intend not to hear. Intend your patient not to hear that. And still do that. Um, and again, separating is nice, but I do Reiki is like we sit around the fire and people are chatting about whatever and I still do Reiki on people. And uh, people would have amazing experiences while other people are in a different mood set. So it is possible to kind of isolate the space and protect it and be in it and and um, and not to be bothered by small things, mosquitoes and stuff. Yeah, that Accusation on that, and still get not to get to the final conclusion. But basically, certainly don't invite negative spirits. That's what you <laughs> don't right. want to do. <laughs> don't invite uh, darkness. Don't invite anger. Don't invite um, revenge. Um, don't invite jealousy. Right. So these are not the, the ones. So first, what is positive and negative? As we know, it's all relative. All relative. It's 
how do you define negative? What is negative for you at the moment would be positive for you later, or negative for you now it would be positive for somebody else. Often, not always, but often. So definition of positive and negative is more like creative, destructive. Uh, what is creating new things, make it healthy, make it more energized, more long-term creative, what we consider positive, and what is bringing the randomness, destruction, or retrograde movement, reverse movement, uh, stop the progress would be considered negative. But again, there is. It depends on your zodiac sign and many other things. Like some people, their function in life is to move progress forward, break the system, and see the seeds of the future. And uh, I, it's your decision if you associate yourself with them, but I certainly do. So for me, peaceful revolution, peaceful, peaceful, peaceful revolution, peaceful revolution, peaceful progress, seeding something which will break the system and will be long-term positive is, I embrace it full way. That's that's my inner drive. That's the purpose which I choose, right? A choice. It's a choice. But for, for and it's very natural for Aquarius. Aquarius and a few other signs. Let's let's say that for Aquarius to break the system and see the new, because the year goes. It starts somewhere after the solstice, winter. How do you call it? Winter solstice, right? Winter solstice. Uh, it, that's the lowest point, and then there is Capricorn and Aquarius build uh, start starting the wave of new new things. So we are starters and Pisces, and then there is a growth like summer growth, and then there is a retrograde, destruction, killing, destruction, killing, death, and then a rebirth again. So we are somewhere in the early, in the dark, in the dark part of the year, we're seeding the seeds of the future, right? But for some people like tourists, their main function is to keep the structure, to protect the structure, to be, to be loyal to the structure. And actually Capricorn is also very loyal. Lo Taurus and Capricorn and Libra, the loyalist of the sign, loyal to the system. So they could be, and what are, the system, when the system is cracking, they they have trouble, you know, which side to take. So it's not easy to take to take sides because progress is always breaking something. So while sitting the seeds, we are destroying something old, right? So where is positive and where is negative? It's all very relative, you know. From one point of view, we are destroying destroyers. From another point of view, we are uh, saviors of the of the of the uh, creation of the reality. So uh, embrace both sides. Understand that you know you wouldn't be able to see darkness unless you had some insight. You are designed in a way that you always had yin and yang, um, creative destructive parts. Right. That's one point. And when you work with a sickness, you can just be a channel of energy. It's passive conductance, passive channeling of the healing energy. But you also can be an active healer, actively healing it, like a surgeon, like a doctor. And sometimes nurses have to do painful um, injections, which I, I dislike a lot. And sometimes surgeons have to cut. Sometimes surgeons have to remove them. Um, so some people are really good in that. Some people, some Reiki healers are really good in that. They can go full force forward, understanding that something is needed there. Uh, some of the saints are really like healing through provocation, I would say, attack. If they know that that attack will cause the enlightenment, cure the misunderstanding, cure the blockage. They could easily use their negative side 
pretend to be negative, but they do it very impersonally, not because of the ego, not, not because I'm afraid, not because I'm hurt, not because even I want. They, they channel their higher wisdom through their ability to hurt for good. So hurting for good is possible, but, but for uh, the beginners, for people on the path to enlightenment, uh, the principle of non harming others is one of the most essential. So learn it, embrace it. It's it's a long path together. I'm not there yet. I'm still can har harm others when I when I feel threatened. Yeah, when I feel threatened by others, and uh, when I feel especially that I care for children and. Um, because of that care, I would easily harm others. Like even the children, if they want to do something dangerous, I would make them cry, but would not allow them to do something dangerous for them, right? And and for adults as well, I'm kind of a grandmother who is worried about people get hurt, and um, and you know I have to resolve it one way or another. But not violence, even verbal violence, even emotional violence, uh, is something that consider embracing it and getting to the state where you do it impersonally. You channel the higher wisdom without ever being worried about yourself, like selfless wisdom. So that's a kind of direction where to go and it's a long path. Again, to understand the sickness, you have to understand the dark side of it. So find your past experience of the darkness and use it. So now you use the darkness to to heal, right? You use your past pain, past trauma to heal. So, um, so, so embracing the darkness is the first step in healing. So say somebody said oh I'm that badly sick and you just accept it accepting the darkness is very unusual very hard initially step but that's the first step in recovery your pain or somebody else's first accepting allowing it to be not the final step but only the first step when you allow it then you transform it in something which results in the re resolution of that and usually it comes it starts with an invitation to their spirit for the healing to the divine mother for the healing to divine father for the healing so, invitation, first accept the pain and then thank that's just even crazier right thanking for the pain but you thank for the pain and thank for experience and thank for the resolution which is coming. And then you invite and then you think again. So acceptance, gratitude, invitation, gratitude. And it works. Now, I learned that recently, but it kind of was there with me, but just getting into the zone using OM and chant, OM is sufficient. Like there is a story of... Um, uh, building a yogi, yogi monastery and um, they just were so much blessed and protected uh, a, yog, a yogi would you know be careless and fall down for all stairs and he, the only thing he had a chance was to just um, say om in, in that fraction of a second he was falling and miraculously he grabbed on the stairs and um, on the ladder and uh, was able to to survive when when you know, just a miracle happened so so now i use all of all the time like if if something which is very often things are negative and out of your control it's just nature of the reality things are negative and out of your control uh, connect up there and say you know, I invite, I gra I'm thank thankful, divine, involved, and thank you for for your guidance. And that helps. That works. That works. 
Um, so for some people, the gentle side is so strong that you really have to learn the, the hard part, the, the, the strong side, the willpower, the willpower, the solar plexus willpower, just to will things into existence. Most famous for that is Steve Jobs, who created reality distortion field. You know, things would go really wrong in his company, technically and business-wise and socially. And he would just will the solution into existence, just with pure willpower. And he was practicing Buddhist and knew the spiritual side of the of, of the of the thing and he would just will into existence the the solution and people just see the reality distorting uh, being distorted in his presence and then the solution would 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 would, would evolve or would be created would um, they they the whole group of people would believe him follow him and create the solution so so this willpower is a huge part of the spiritual tradition beyond Reiki, yogic tradition and um, some people need to practice it and some need, people need to develop it. It is possible. Um, I'm, I'm a, a beginner there. I can create things long term but you know when um, in short term it just doesn't work for me. I, I'm kind of gentle and soft in many cases and uh, you can notice how people listen to you when you speak. Um, when I speak, everybody starts speaking too. But you know, when Jim speaks, everybody just, no matter what he says, people just start listening. That's that's you know the solar plexus chakra working. Uh, there are people who are very quiet, and when they say, even when they speak nonsense, people still listen. It, it's amazing. It's, Something which is completely non-logical. It's something going in a spiritual part. Um, as a leader, you have to make tough decisions. So um, many of you are already leaders or future leaders. So leaders understand that you will have to make negative decisions and learn to make them with grace. Sometimes it's impossible to satisfy everybody. Uh, so sometimes you have to embrace negative decisions um, for long-term benefit, for long-term wisdom, for long-term creative side of things, for saving everybody again. Some people are supposed to get lessons, so sometimes you withhold the answers so people get the lessons or sometimes they give only partial answers so that brings me to one of the secondary principles of Reiki is a principle I guess galactic Reiki principle of the next step so you don't give the client all the answers when you do the psychic consultation when you help them with their life you don't give all the answers because they're ne ne never ready for all the answers you Remember yourself in that situation and figure out what is the next step for them. Just the next step. Uh, give them a clue in which direction to, th to think. It's logical, yeah, to think where, in which direction to develop, in which direction to investigate. And um, respect their choice. Sometimes they would neglect or reject your suggestion and just respect their choice. Very often people would reject it but still by rejection they pay attention. So it will take several more. Usually you have so many tries to learn the lesson. So you hit your head on the wall once, hit your well head on the wall twice, third time, ten times and then you realize oh there is a door next uh, next to the wall. So, so some people learn just by observing others and some people just uh, repeat errors forever and, until they kind of get it in this life or maybe next life. <sighs> Comments, questions so far? Comments, questions? 
No, I'm good. Thank you. Mm. All right. I think it's a good good time for the bathroom break. So five minutes. Um, let's come back in five minutes. I think we're good. Hey there. Can you hear me? Hi, Max. Yes, yes. Yay. Yes. Um, Katie gracefully agreed to serve as a okay. as a model. So I will uh, now do a little more of the. Uh, I will do talking and demonstration at the same time. It's a little fuzzy by some reason. How is everybody? Great. Really good. Uh -huh. All right, nice. Lay down back. So one trick which I learned recently, it's not traditional in Reiki, but it really helps when you do a lot of people. And some people are sensitive to your touch, so I would do like that. I would put their uh, fabric around their face and then touch through the fabric. Reiki goes equally well through the fabric. Um, but I always leave the space for the, for the breathing. So leave the space for the breathing. Also, uh, pay attention to your breath. I usually breathe a little bit sideways, so my breath, which is not always mm, clean, goes not right to their breath. Um, and that is my favorite. I guess microphone is on the way. Just a sec. This would be my would be my favorite ever position. It reminds a mind meld by um, Vulcans from Star Trek. I like setting up microphones. Vulcan <laughs> mind meld. Say again? The Vulcan mind meld. Right. I think that, that's even more visible. Um, yeah, perfect. Vulcan like that. So in Vulcans, in, Vulcan did it this way, but just upside down. I still touch the 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 bone here with my two fingers. The bone with these two fingers, and the, and these fingers touch each other like that. And here is a little bit of space between the skin and the dead bone, which I don't know how to call it, the beginning of the two fingers. And when I leave a space, it's much easier for me to feel the energy flowing because there is no touch sensation there, but I still feel like a little buzz there, which is easier. When you touch, you kind of you have physical sensation plus Reiki sensation. When you Keep the hands a little above. It's much easier to feel the Reiki. And when you feel there is a feedback, positive feedback, and that's that helps you to that helps you to um, feel it, um, feel it and inflate it. Feel it and inflate it. Feel it and inflate it. And some people are sensitive when you touch their face. So, like that would be another position which I would. I could stay in it for like for the whole session, like that. Just just two hands, either this way or this way. And sometimes this way is working better. I don't know the reason. Just either kind of around the temples. Just I assume there is a lot of activity going in the temples, uh, energetic activity. So that's what I do. I work with them with that energy by holding. The Hands like this, either touching or not touching, often not touching, or or like that. And I can't explain the difference. There is some difference, but I just feel it. I don't have the explanation. What what actually does it do? Uh, the intention there is to to um, to heal the trauma and to upgrade the chakras. That's that's you know, my my would be my typical intention. Heal the trauma, upgrade the chakras. I have 
wandering mind. Some people have very direct mind, and I'm have I have very wandering, like extremely wandering. That is like tons of thoughts there, like at the same time. Like I would think, I think like, are the dogs fed? Did they pee? Or um, you know, what happens in the universe? What did I listen to yesterday? All of this would exist there, like constantly spinning there. And what do I have like? Uh, all the business questions and all the questions rely uh, and what does the patient think about me? Are they asleep or are they uh, afraid that I will have uh, do something inappropriate with them? All of that is spinning, all the programs running at the same time, which makes it very inefficient in many ways. But on the other hand, that that's kind of mode of function which allows me to get spirit messages. You know, when I'm kind of single-minded, the spirit messages are blunted. But when there is like mess there, they kind of push them through through that mess. That's that's how it happens in my mind. I uh, like today. I another miracle happened. I you know I was taking a shower and uh, frying my omelet, and in the shower I was as usual. I get download for the class, and in that download there was your omelet is ready, and I ran out wet out of the shower and and save my omelet from being burned <laughs> and and uh, that never happens when I don't do meditation for the Reiki class like if I did it not for Reiki class it would be burned like 90% of my omelets are burned <laughs> so this one was, was miraculously saved <laughs> uh... so uh, I, I invite lots of downloads and my one of my typical intentions when I do uh, Reiki healing would be what message should I give to the uh, client? What is their main next step for them? What What is the message? And usually, or very often, I don't get the message until I start speaking. So I kind of invite it, and then, and then it comes. And um, that's a psychic reading, basically. I, I, I combine my psychic reading with um, with the healing. For Reiki, I mean that's. One of many options for Reiki. Also, the main thinking is where should I focus my uh, Reiki healing? Where what is the b main um, part of the body which requires uh, again? What's the next step for the Reiki? And uh, just finding that that part of the body, that position of the hands, could be the main one of the main questions you, you, you consider. So I do a lot of logical reasoning and lots of other Reiki practitioners, they just get into the zone, get into the space, and it is a meditation for the client. The energy is flowing well now, by the way. And um, can you mute? Somebody has... Somebody is... Uh -oh. <laughs> just, just hold it in. Yeah, it's, it's mm. yeah, all is good now. All right, mm. so yeah, distractions happen, and you just can get get used to them. You still, you know, distract, and you come back to that right away, or do some dance, and then come back to that. So, what is recommended? Uh, yes, focusing on the breathing. Absolutely, that's a typical beginner's start. And we'll do it in a second. Focusing on the breathing is a meditation you suggest to the patient. And um, I found sometimes it's easier just to say them focus on your breathing, concentrate on your breathing without actually directing the breathing because because you really don't know often you know how to direct the breathing. Why would you bother to tell them breathe breathe in now and then forget to tell them to breathe out and things like that. So uh, just say focus on your breathing is sufficient. And second, explain to them that they would uh, inflate the ball of energy in their heart. That would be another advice which you would get. And you would do the same. Um, so getting into the space where you don't think is wonderful. And often I do that. Just uh, And also suggesting that to the client would be great. So, you know, if you... Uh, what I say, well, let's do that. So, Kathy, thank you for accepting the healing. Welcome to the Reiki. Have you had Reiki before? Yes. Wonderful. 
And um, do you mind sharing online what's your favorite color? Sure. Uh, my favorite color is pink. Wow. Ah, nice. Um, so if you, I would invite you to focus on your breathing. Breathe consciously, a little deeper than usual, and a little bit more of belly breathing, belly type of breathing. And um, imagine when you breathe in, you take the prana, the energy, the Reiki energy from the universe. And when you breathe out, inflate the ball of golden energy, the flame of golden energy in your heart. And when it goes big, send it to where it is needed. That energy, send it to where in the body it is needed to heal the pain, to heal the trauma, and to clear the blockages. And that's that simple. That's it. That's the main Reiki meditation. Another suggestion you can give to a patient who is into energy arts, arts already, who is more advanced, like yoga, arts, Reiki arts, you can suggest them to accept your Reiki and help it. So basically, when you feel that energy is flowing, when you feel, feel the heat, help it. Intend to amplify it. I give you only a tuning, and it's up to you how much of the tuning you take and how much you match that energy. I give you the tone, and you have to sing your own part. So bring your energy into that healing. And that's about it. And um, usually, for the beginners, I explain that for a few minutes, maybe 15 minutes, you will be here, but intend to get on the other side. And part of the, of the, of the session, you might be on the other side. I will, you are protected, you are in a good environment, so don't, don't um, Don't resist, of into, don't resist the, in, the, the sleep. Get, get the sleep, get that therapeutic nap, and get on the other side. And the healing would get even better if you're on the other side. And when you come back, don't start moving right away. Don't um, give yourself time to kind of adjust to your body. Don't be afraid of numbness. Numbness and, um, how do you call it? Mm. When body becomes loses the control, paralysis. Yeah, uh, paralysis is a part of healing. Basically, I lift you out of that reality and shift your consciousness to higher dimension where you don't have as good control of your body. So don't be surprised that your hands don't move, your legs don't move, your you have only control on your breath. That's the last thing you have to control. And the rest, if it is becomes slightly paralyzed, don't worry. That's welcome. That paralysis. That's natural. And um, if you wish actually to come back, just intend that you are in charge. Intend to come back, and give yourself time, maybe five minutes, to gradually get into your body. So first you control your breath, then you control your fingers, uh, um, toes. And then give yourself time to get fully into your body. It's like your astral body gradually returns and returns to the possession of the physical body. And it's natural. That's, that's absolutely how it's supposed to. So that's about it. Uh, what else do you think about? Uh, for me, if I find myself drifting away, I bring myself back. Uh, my Current uh, wonderful healer, she is absolutely great in being focused on the healing. She is, she d takes like a very long meditation before I come. So, so no matter where I come, she sits in her uh, meditation and prepares for the for the for the therapy. So that is a huge importance. So to meditate before, and then she, she's very focused. She wouldn't talk much during the, the session. She would talk a little bit before. And after, but during the therapy, she would do a sacred therapeutic dance, basically, do a sacred ceremony, which is complete focus on the on 
on, on the helium. I know it for sure because I feel it. She is fully there, 100% there doing the healing, fully there doing whatever is her routine is. And that routine is sophisticated and magical. So being in that zone and being completely focused on the healing, being completely devoted to the result is, is wonderful. So when I feel that my mind drifts away, I, I chant. For me, chanting is that that helps me to focus back. Uh, doing their uh, languages also brings me back. Uh, and often, uh, I know I'm very patient about not patient. What's that word? The other word. Uh, passionate, passionate about uh, children. So I see a child in every patient. So you know, for me, is to see that patient as if it was a child, and that uh, brings up my grandmotherly energy. So I channel my my grandmotherly side. Okay. I also find, I mentioned that before, but I think it's important. When I speak, I can separate my Reiki energy. I still feel the Reiki energy and can speak. But it's, you know, if you don't speak, it's much easier. So being silent, intentionally silent, is important. But when the patients are speaking, their head energy doesn't move anymore that way. So the, the flow stops. So I suggest to them gently to... Uh, to be silent, to remain silent during the session, unless they will need to say something important. You know, they get distracted and they need, like, sometimes my nose started, how do you say it, how do you say it in English? Uh, need, needs to scratch, I don't know. There is, uh, I don't know that word, but anyway, uh, like, I need to move my hand around. So I give myself a few seconds, and first I try to, to get away from that, right? <laughs> and then, and then, uh, and it helps sometimes. But sometimes you need to move and basically touch your nose. So I will take a few seconds and gradually, slowly move, scratch it a little bit, and move my hand back. So moving slowly helps a lot to keep the energy in proper, in proper flow. All right. Now the meditation. Um, I want you to give the first. Um, galactic position, I would say position. It is, you don't have to use it, but if you wish, it's a uh, it's, um, hand position, I guess, or your position. So, most of the things on Earth, most of the symbols, most of the galactic symbols are already present on Earth. Uh, you, it really, it's, it's, it's really fine to find a symbol which is not present on Earth because galactic presence, the al presence of the aliens have been here for all existence of the humanity. So all of the symbols already, which are galactic, are already here. So that symbol is also ancient too, and you understand. So that position is this one, very simple. I'm confused now. Like that. Very simple like that. And left hand goes first, right hand on the left. And um, and um, it symbolizes, I'm ready to go for a visit. Take me now. I'm ready to go for a visit. Take me now. Very simple. And it also helps uh, transdimensional uh, teleportation because it kind of wraps your energy in. You're fully enclosed. It it closes the circuit. So your circuit is closed. It's much easier to transport you this way. You're not as connected to environment as before. So that's and that reminds me uh, the position of Egyptian mummy, right? Okay. Uh, the next. Um, Angelic meditation or angelic, how do you call it? Angelic, um, there is some word for that. Movement. Angelic movement is 
Yeah, you can repeat with me if you like. You stay here. Okay. Imagine yourself to be in an angel, basically invite an angel to populate your body. And um, what you do, let me do OM for now. Um, One. Two. Three. And that's about it. Uh, so that brings that uh, really brings angelic energy. It, um, Angels are our, our great friends. They are the ones who do a lot of miracles. So, so imagine yourself doing that with with the wings. So that would be your wings doing that. You do one, two, and then three. Mm. Allah ya nahula ya Allah ya nahala Allah ya hana. Okay, so there are two types of um, things that happen unexpectedly, but now they sort of become expected. And something happens to the patient. Sometimes it is a very positive experience, and sometimes it's somewhat negative. So in one case, you don't need to do anything. You just stay there and protect them, basically cover them. This is where they have some sort of treatment. Uh, start crying on the bed. That's what happens very often. And usually I either work on their head at that time or I work on their on their second chakra. So I, I put my hand under. I don't know if it's part of traditional Reiki, but it really works well for me. So I put my hand under somewhere where the spine goes, like a little up, and put my hand on the second chakra. So that would be one of the positions. And um, sometimes people start crying, sometimes they start shaking. And uh, usually it's in a positive way. After that, they have that they have uh, they say that they have uh, amazing spiritual experience. And I, I'm just there protecting their peace and uh, working on their like basically just just being a channel, passively being a channel, not doing much. Uh, sometimes they raise their hands, they sit down, miracles happen, but uh, I just don't just, and uh, first they cry, then they start laughing, and uh, I think it's wonderful. And, and then they tell me after that that it's wonderful. A uh, couple times I tried to interrupt, and they, to the body, said, you know, don't bother, all is good, uh, and continued, so, so, they can be even present at that time. Sometimes they're not. And the other case is when the evil spirit enters, and that's either enters the body or it could be nearby. And that's where you have to actually do something. Have to be in a king. You just happen to be on the on the throne. Maybe you're newly appointed king, but you know, then you're in charge. You're expected to do something if something negative happens. So you are a healer, and you're in charge of the session. So whatever happens, you are in charge. You have to do something if something negative happens. Um, and um, how to deal, deal with evil spirits or disturbed spirits, it's, uh, it's art. Like once um, Jim was possessed with uh, basically 
negative alien, and this alien came into his body and started cursing in some alien language. And it was clearly it was something very unhappy. Help him. So after a few minutes, he finally figured out how to speak English to me through Jim. And um, and then I he explained his he's trapped on Earth for many for a very long time. And uh, I didn't know how to help him, so I just um, did the music for him. I had a um, I had a drum and I just uh, played uh, nice smooth music just to calm him down and kind of send him positive message. And uh, that kind of served the purpose and Jim started coughing and the spirit left and uh, it explained to Jim that um, he remembered something nice from the past which he didn't remember for a long time and he was thankful for the experience and that healed something in it. So. Actually, I did Reiki, some sort of Reiki to the spirit which possessed Jim. So, so all positive, all all negative things, you know, they can be converted to a positive. Because, in the, you, you're, you're in charge to make it positive. You can make it positive. Uh, sometimes you can just command them, basically saying, "I'm in charge. Please leave. I Jim needs his body. He has the right." To have his body back, or whoever the patient is, so so doing something, reading something, is is your responsibility. You just do it, and stay positive. Just you know, like imagine yourself to be a parent or a tsar or a leader who who's ch who is in charge of the situation, and you just do it without anger, but but firmly. Uh, and again, I mean, it's you switch between uh, male principle, which is take action, and female principle, just allowing the things to happen. So you might invite the higher spirit to take charge. So you pray for to angels and higher spirit to higher spirits to solve this. So very often, voice would change things. You just kind of in your voice, you project the new reality. Um, Sometimes there is a person who is passively present, but if there is a third person, removing the third person sometimes would help. So changing the number of people in the room would, is often a great solution. So if there is some conflict going on, just removing someone negative and bringing someone positive would help. Uh, opening the window is often what is needed. Um, changing the music, turning on the music. Um, Burning say burning incense, uh, keeping positive attitude is is what is needed. And of course, you know some solution, some problems don't have a solution. So, you know, just take it easy. You're a healer. Whatever happens, um, take it easy. Like imagine yourself a doctor, experienced doctor. They they see all possible outcomes and they live through and continue to be doctors and healers. So. Uh, just do your best and uh, do what you're supposed to do and don't worry about things where, which are not in your control. Um, again, there are options. There are many of them. Many, many people come and don't take it. You just respect their choice. Sometimes you recognize yourself in, in the past or recognize the situation like when a person is say a star seed like clearly an alien star seed they have all the talents all the blessings from angels and aliens they're very advanced but they focus on negative things they uh, complain they see the dark side they play with the dark side they engage in prohibited things like negative things and then, you know, again, I use the next step principle. You know, I would just offer them the next step. I would remember myself in that situation and offer them what would be the next step. See the, you know, their connection, their connection to the divine, their next step in their evolution. Uh, that brings a huge topic. Thank you for prompting. Is the souls come here for 
in this illusion to learn lessons and sometimes they carry with themselves a lot of luggage from the past lives. So reincarnation is is part of the understanding and uh, past karma is part of the understanding. In this age many of past karmas, many of past disbalances can be relieved from you by different miracles. So you don't really have to work out all the karmas from the past. It is a ch an age of transformation where you shift. as you become the part of the healing energy, become the part of the ascension, then uh, lots of lots lots of karmic issues can be resolved easily or just dropped. You get lots of help from other from the universe to drop the karma. And anyway, the souls come here to learn the lessons, and many of them, we have like 8 billion people or so on, on Earth, and many of them are fresh souls. They come to learn very basic lessons. And the lessons come in different levels. So there is a root chakra, and the root chakra is between the legs, basically. That's the biggest distance between the spine from the tail bone to the to the brain. Because this is the lower vibration. And that vibration is responsible for the survival, survival, basic needs, elimination, physical elimination, uh, food, basic food, and um, connection to the ancestors, so ancestral support. It's very important chakra, connection to the earth. We are part of the earth, we are made from earth. We share the elements with the earth. And keep in mind, everything is alive, the earth is conscious, so that connection to the conscious earth is important. And many people, lots of people, are coming here in this life, in this incarnation, basically for the basic root chakra lessons, which is physical work, agriculture, even sports, very basic physical things. And um, you respect this lesson, that's where they come from. You don't teach them the lessons of uh, higher chakras. The main achievement is to learn several, like about 12 lessons, major lessons for, for the root chakra and then move to the second chakra communication. So, so they struggle with the communication issues. They just learn how to communicate with others, how not to be alone here, how to survive, support themselves, support others, and to communicate with them. So that's their main lesson, and you respect that lesson. And it doesn't have to be one lesson per lifetime. It can be lots of upgrades, and they can be the lessons from the, of the first chakra, but also learn the lessons of the fourth chakra, of the fifth chakra, and so on. So it doesn't have to be only one lesson. But sometimes on, on this stage of the life, on um, yeah, on this stage of the life, that could be the major lesson they're learning right now: survival and communication. Um, so that gives you also a clue how to help them with the next step, so where they should work. Usually the next step is the hardest for them, is the most fear, that's what causes most of the fear, anger, and negative emotions. So what is mostly negatively emotionally charged is exactly where they should work on. So you give them a few clues how to work on that. It doesn't, you don't have to uh, be, give them all the complexity of the spiritual design, just very basic steps and, you know, inviting help of the Divine Mother, of the Divine Father, of God, of creation. If they're open to that, every, every family is open to that help. So just direct connection to God also helps. So this, and the, the, usually the favorite color for this level of lessons would be red. So the color of root, root chakra is red and you, often uh, the favorite color of the person would be red. Uh, the next chakra is 
the chakra of salespeople. So all this advertisement on television, all this nonsense of communication, which is like positive, very low vibrational communication would be the second chakra. So these people are accumulating wealth, accumulating so big houses, you know, expensive cars, lots of money, working for the getting the money. That's lessons of the second chakra. This is the chakra of traders, uh, salespeople, uh, accumulating people, a consumer, consumer's chakra. So their main lesson is to upgrade, to get up, so from the first to second you learn to communicate, so you communicate on lower level but lots of talking. So, so when you upgrade from physical worker to a trader to salesperson, that's you know, lots of talking. But then for the salesperson, the next upgrade to the third chakra is upgrade in understanding of the duty of self-sacrifice. And that would be upgrade to the warrior, the third chakra. Warrior is the will and, um, how do you call it, forcing others to your will, expressing the will, making others to listen, making others to follow. That's a chakra of managers, warriors, government, officials, whoever is in charge, family leader, group leader, that's, you know, willpower, forcing others to your will. And... Uh, combined with duty and other things of that sort, like self-sacrifice, higher ideals. So when a salesperson finally learns how to force others, how to uh, force your will on others, that's the main lesson they do. So, and that is the television of violence as well. Television of violence, suffering, wars and stuff. So that's an upgrade. So people are just, lots of people on Earth are still learning the lessons of first three chakras, which is traditional 3D world. Third chakra is also a chakra of hierarchy, who is in control of who, who is on the top. So you respect their choices, respect them. You know, they are learning these lessons, it's very valid. We all went through. So you, you are born, when you are born, you are born with the first chakra working. So all you do is eat, Breathe, scream, and uh, and uh, eliminate the waste. So that's all the first chakra does. And it's you know every baby is dominating first chakra. And then you upgrade through the life to higher and higher lessons. And many babies are still remembering their past lives when they had very advanced lessons. So as you grow, you kind of remember your past levels. So you're not doing it for the first time. You remember your past greatness as well. So these first three chakras uh, upgrade to the fourth chakra, which is the chakra, the heart chakra. And that's one of the major upgrades. That's an upgrade to the future humanity. From 3D humanity, which is three first three chakras, to the future humanity, humanity of telepathy, empathy, and love. And union, union. So union through love. Uh, the first three chakras are separated from the fourth chakra physically with a veil of um, diaphragm. So the belly from diaphragm, which is a veil, and then the heart chakra, which is beyond. It's it's already four dimensional. It is, and the the heart chakra also is the chakra of Reiki. You do your Reiki with a connection of your physical sensations to to your heart. And so the, the vibration which you activate is that vibration between the brain and the, the vertebrae controlling the heart, vertebrae controlling the heart, so that's a higher vibration, shorter distance, and that's how you tune into Reiki. So the healer, as you become a healer, you tune into that fourth, fourth chakra and the higher dimension. So the future humanity, humanity will vibrate at that vibration, that and higher vibrations. So the lesson is how, and that would correspond to social activities such as art, science, all, I mean all, four, all, all three higher chakras, all four higher chakras, art, science, 
priestly activities, religion. Okay, spiritual side, spirituality, I would say, not religion, spirituality. Um, lots of lots of different arts, and uh, lots of spiritual activities. I would say, you know, we can name them, but basically, spiritual, science, and arts. Basically, that's that's the the, the next upgrade from the warrior to to these activities, to creative activities, to higher vibrational activities. And then all three higher chakras, all four higher chakras, they work together so you can focus on connection to God, the top chakra, direct connection to God. Third eye is psychic activities, telepathy, uh, which would be seventh, sixth. The throat is communication, high level of communication, and the heart is is um, love and empathy. All right, so um, so you don't have to explain all of that. You just give guess their next choice, and as you um, dialogue with them, you find what is the positive thing in your in their life and what is the uh, potential for their development. Like, uh, first chakra could be gardening and connection to nature. Second chakra would be um, communication with people, teaching people, uniting with people, and then upgrading to the duty. Third chakra, upgrade to uh, creative arts. And fourth chakra, upgrade to chanting and communications and channeling. Uh, fifth chakra would be upgrade to clairvoyance, clear uh, remote viewing and um, seeing the future uh, telepathy. And the fifth chakra, uh, the, the sixth chakra would be upgrade to the, again, one of the highest upgrades, upgrade to the unity with the, with the creation and um, and direct connection to God. And there are higher upgrades as well. Uh, interestingly, when I work on hi higher spiritual people than I, so my main vibration is somewhere somewhere here, right? The teal color, teal color, that's my favorite. So between between the heart and the, and the mind, so I kind of vibrate here. I live more like in that area. So when I work on gym or on Wendy, which is like completely alien to me, they are vibrating so high, so I have to ask them, could you please step a little bit down so I can energetically connect to you, which is very funny. So how can you heal? But actually, you can heal, help the people as antenna, as your intention, to even to people of higher vibration. It is possible. And um, uh, my favorite saying is from... Alan, Alan Ginsberg is, you can learn something even from a bad guru. So even from you, higher vibration people can learn something, and you can heal them, you can teach them something even if you're not on their level. So it's okay to be on your level. It's okay to stay where you are and learn the lessons where you are. There is nothing wrong. There is no spiritual hierarchy. There is There are different levels, but you choose to stay here and work wherever wherever you're called. So you don't have to jump to higher energy lessons. You can, but uh, you understand you, your energy level corresponds to your lessons. If you grab the lesson from higher level, it would be nice and wise to come back and recharge before you go again. So you, you breathe, you go higher lesson, higher le level, lower level, higher level, lower level, and still do your work and be functional. You don't have to hurt yourself by by staying too high and running out of energy. Because if your main, I would say, level of development, the structure of your vibration of your astral body is somewhere here, working all the time on that level would exhaust you and you feel exhaustion. But if you 
work on the lower level lessons, you feel angry and out of place. You just don't know why would you learn the lessons which you already passed. So, so you work on the level on the level where you are now, and just realize where you are, understand where you are, and aim to get upgrades all the time. And you get upgrades all the time. Ask for upgrades, pray for upgrades. Uh, when um, when you come to a healer, ask for upgrades from the healer, and uh, that's that's what you do. That's what you do. That's it. You do upgrades all the time. Learn the lessons. Do upgrades. Clear yourself up. Make make yourself a good channel. And when you go, get into the zone, when you get purified, you can do reiki all the time, 24 hours a day, and you will exhaust it. It's all the level where you are and how much luggage do you carry with you. So as you drop luggage gracefully, you get upgraded and you become supercharged. Am I running out of time? I assume yes. I, I would take uh, the last question and then we'll take a break before Jim comes in. Max, when you yes. place your hands over the chakras, yes. Um, what do you focus on? What 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 are the dynamics of the energy there? Excellent. So, can you repeat the last part of the question? What are the dynamics of, of the energy that you see? What are you focusing on? Oh, thank you. Excellent. So the simple answer, you go all around the place, can, and usually I place my, my right hand on the shoulder just to connect to the bones, and left hand would be the one which senses things. And slowly, 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 I feel some activity here. I feel like little blow here and I slowly move around and I feel activity here and um, I feel activity on the pardon on the breast and on the heart Actually on the right breast more and I move around I pay attention to the liver and spleen study the basic uh, anatomy liver and spleen are very important so work on that focus on that and Lots of activity, lots of nice, nice kind of energy flows here. And feel where you, where are you cold, uh, cold, being cold, where you're being cold. What is the, where the spirit directs to you? And I usually feel it like, how does it feel to me? Do I excited working on, on that? So finally, after I find the place. I just feel so happy that I would stay there forever because it feels happy. It's you know simple barometer, happy pleasure. So for me it would be pleasant to work on certain spots. And um, sometimes it is a sharp, sharp um, feeling like sharp, and that would be the trauma which also would I would work on the trauma. I don't feel trauma right now. I feel like just a nice happy space. But sometimes you would find a trauma there and you would work on it until it subsides. And often you kind of exchange afterwards, after the session, you would exchange with the patient um, the impressions and then they will tell you, yes, yes, there was something there. Or sometimes it is spiritual, psychological, or physical. It could be any. any. So uh, keep in mind the chakras are air not an illusion, but convention. Chakras are a convention. It is. It comes from outside of the earth. It comes from the alien tradition. But basically, there is very little in um, nature which follows number seven. It is an invention of of pre-earth humans to build the structure based on number seven. So it's. It is artificial division of continuous vibration scale into seven parts. So there is uh, heart vibration, but also there is upper heart. There is continuous vibration in between. So every vertebrae, every vertebrae has its own vibration. So you can work in between the chakras as efficient as you can work on the chakras. But that, because of the tradition of many of a long time, that reality was accepted as real and now there is like 
these chakras became strengthened by that tradition. So although it's, it is artificial, it is strengthened and it is real because it was accepted by humans. So number seven is seven days per week and uh, sort of number of nodes an octave and there are a few other things which are number seven but they are all sort of chosen by the human spirit to build upon as a convention. So respect it but understand that you can bend the rule and work in between the chakras as efficiently as on the chakras. So I would work with the left hand and right I would kind of feed the energy. Right would uh, feed it and left hand would um, do the healing part. And as I understand energy bo goes both ways from right to left, from left to right. It's kind of two direct, uh, both, both directional flow. And that's about it. I would send the intention, so male principle, send the intention, will the healing, and then I would use my female, feminine principle, just allowing the healing to happen. So invite and then allow. And as I feel the buzz in my hands, I would just inflate it, kind of will it more, uh, welcome it, and help it to happen there. And trust my healing helpers so from other side, which I, I know they're aliens and spirits and angels. And the creator, the divine mother. So I invite the divine mother to heal and I trust her to do the rest. That's simple. And first I get, get excited. And then there is a thought coming, mm, maybe I should move on. And I kind of think, mm, should I move on or not? And sometimes it's clearly not. And sometimes it's time to start wrapping up. And sometimes, yes, it's, it's time to move on. So you just kind of very easily decide what to do. Don't move too much because there is certain timing proper for Reiki. Uh, so Reiki is not, is not, it's not nice to just dance around the room too much. It's not Reiki anymore. It's some other healing art. It's more like shamanic healing or Qigong healing. But in Reiki you stay for, for a while, for minutes in the same place. And um, get the support for the hand. So if you hold it in the, in the air, sometimes it's just really hard, especially if the patient doesn't want the touch. It's really hard to hold your hands for the whole hour. So sometimes that helps, actually. One hand holding another. So uh, that helps. Um, that position, that position is just as efficient as other positions. You can do Reiki from the distance, and it's much easier to stay in this position. Um, Pleiadian, Pleiadian uh, healing position, completely straight cross. It feels really good. So invite Pleiadian healing like that. It's positive, it's not suffering, it's just positive, pure Pleiadian energy sending it. You, I feel like really nice buzz between the fingers right here. Really nice buzz. And um, sometimes it's just sufficient to send the energy on one place, see, the heart, that would be nice. And that's about it. The energy knows where to go, so it's sufficient. You don't really have to be much more sophisticated. Which hand on the top, which hand on the bottom? Sometimes it's just doesn't matter. Sometimes I feel like real preference, and uh, I would follow intuition. Um, I don't think I would put my much more logic in it. Usually, like for me, it's like right hand sending the energy and left hand, I don't know what it does. I guess uh, right hand is more like the engine which sends less sophisticated energy and left hand is more like a healing doctor who uses that supportive energy to really do the work. So for me, it's like that. Yeah, one is sending, and the second is healing. One is like support and like driving support, and that is really doing the work. 
But I guess I, I'm, I'm ambidextrous, so for others it could be different. For me, like, I was born with left hand dominant and then was taught to taught to use right hand. So now I'm ambidextrous. Oh. Now we are done. I thank you for the um, questions and for being part of it, co-creation. There are other classes, Reiki classes, recorded on the same channel, you call it TV, you can just search for Reiki, you will find other classes. Uh, sign up for the Reiki 2 class, Reiki at humancolony.org. Reiki at human door. Understand that it is only the beginning, only the door opened. No end for the learning of medicine and energy medicine and medical science and spiritual science. By the way, uh, check out Spiritual Science YouTube channel on YouTube. YouTube Extraordinary. I still like, there is so much there. It's, uh, it's much more than I can cover in, 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 in my classes. It's tons more, tons more. Uh, sacred geometry and healing the design of the spirit world, it is unlimited. Again, there is unlimited amount of progression, how much you can progress in connection to the divine and channeling the divine. So we are on the path, we connect together and do the work. Um, the purpose can be very simple, it's your choice, but basically helping the ascension, helping, helping the upgrade of, the, of this illusion, to the next level so we can learn higher level lessons. So in your healing you basically do the upgrade of the level of the lessons. Instead of suffering survival, the levels of the lessons of creation, connection to the divine and channeling the divine wisdom into this reality to upgrade it. So that would be your choice to 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 follow and to channel to embody to manifest the divine wisdom. I bless you all. Thank you all and I invite Jim. Is, is Jim back? Hey Jim! Okay, he's not back. So, nice. We have extra time for questions. Thank you, Max. That no, was not wonderful. nice. I am back, but go ahead and answer mm -hmm. questions. Ah, hey Jim. Thank you. No, go ahead. I'm done, actually. I will do the the chant for you. Turn on your camera. Your camera is off. Hold on. Allah Hayana, Allah Hayana, Allah All right, Jim, the microphone is yours. Thank you. Um, hello, everybody, and uh, that was fantastic, uh, Max. Thank you. I think we should start by having a little break and making sure everybody can hear. I was noticing on some of the side notes that people were missing some things because of breaks. Can you hear me properly at this time? Yes. Okay, is everybody, yes. anybody not hearing me well? You're coming through good. Thank you. Okay, very good. Take a five minute and I will be right, we will be right back. Hey, Jim. Hello. <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> we just need a short break so I have you fresh so that you're not having to go while I'm talking. <laughs> Is everybody back? Yes. yes. Is there any... I, I hope everybody's back. Yes. Okay. Very good. Hello and welcome to my part. Um, I hope everybody can hear me very well. I'm going to do some reviewing from last week. 
I know he showed you the hand positions again. Uh, he has the he showed you some of the non-touch positions as well. I was noticing, and uh, was telling you about chakras and different things like that. We have two totally different styles. You understand? Everybody's going to have their own style for Reiki, but there are some basics like the hand positions that you need to know. But as you become a greater and greater gifted healer, you will be note that energy comes to you in your own personal way. That perhaps the hand positions, only some of them will work for you really well, and there's something else that might work better. Uh, can For those of you that are already doing Reiki, can you uh, attest to that? Hello, yes. anybody? Okay. Yes. Yes. So your own style comes into it, doesn't it? I mean, it your something that was not taught to you is still part of your Reiki because it works. It's the energy flows that way, and it's the same with me. I have different things. I've actually added ac acupressure to my Reiki healings because. It seems it was very natural for me uh, to use my fingertips uh, for putting them on uh, pressure points, and it really works because the energy goes in very quickly that way, and I get a much greater result for myself. Now, others say, no, they can't do it that way. They get a greater result if you do it this way. Some people get a greater result if they do it that you know, with their hands above the body instead of touching it. So everyone has their own style. So I just wanted to make you aware of that. We're teaching you the basics of Reiki, and you should use them at first, but you're going to find out as after you're attuned, your energies will get stronger, and also you will feel led or inspired to uh, touch certain air, other areas of the body, you might say to them, "Are you? is this area over there here hurting? Because a, a voice will come to you that there are other places on the body that are needing healed other than the place that they told you about. Now, sometimes you're led to that without them even saying so. Other times, many people are tell you everything that's wrong right up front. They'll tell you ten things right away. So you won't have to use that but there are those people that are sort of shy and they'll only tell you the one thing that's hurting the worst but yet there's several things on their body hurting so you may be led to say is your back hurting is your neck hurting is your leg hurting is your knee hurting um, and if they go well yeah how did you know uh, it, you just may feel the leading to that area. So don't be surprised if that happens. And let me tell you why. Does anybody know what the word Reiki really means? Were you? Yes. Did anybody? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Live energy? Something like that. It, um, I will tell you exactly what it means. It's a Japanese uh, word, but it's in two parts. Reiki is Rei, which means wisdom of God or the power of God, which is very spiritual, and Ki, which is the energy of life, the energy of life. So you put those together, you have the energy and wisdom of God and the energy of life. So therefore, what you're doing is very high spiritual stuff. So that is why sometimes you are able to get these thoughts and processes. If you are serious about your healing, God sometimes speaks or sends someone to speak or sends some thought processes to help you with your healing. Of course. Now, this is why some religions also are going, oh, I don't want Reiki, 
it's a it's a foreign spiritual activity and my religion doesn't believe in it because that's their God and not my God okay you've heard that before my mother was that way she said oh my goodness she heard the song my sweet Lord by George Harrison and he said Krishna Krishna I had to go wash out my ears and my mouth you know and uh, so that uh, because that was their God and not our God but if you are in the know you will know that there is one God that governs everybody all religions they're all very very similar they all all great books of religion are very similar and have very have the very same likeness to God is it different is he different no he's the same in all those books <laughs> he's the very same so and even ha they even have some stories in there that are exactly the same so if you're thinking he's a different God if they think he's a different God and they are afraid of that uh, I would tell them no but if if that's their belief then they can they can go with that if they like but you do not have to impose any spirituality on them whatsoever when you're doing Reiki it's an energy healing and whoever their God is you can connect with them through Reiki because you don't have to say oh this is the Reiki God no um, this is just the wisdom and power of God combined with the life force of mankind it's beautiful and so you will find that it works really beautifully together so let me start by refreshing your mind about how I do Reiki I, I remember how I went around the body and opened all the energy areas does everybody remember that yes very good the reason I do that <clears throat> I'll go over again is because it opens the body up for a better healing if all the energy centers if you go around the body and the energy field is moving in a better way then of course your Reiki is going to flow a lot stronger flow and go to the places it needs to get to a lot easier of course they say Reiki goes to the places it needs to go even though you may not be touching that area it's gonna start flowing to places it needs to go but I know this if you actually go to those areas of the body and directly affect them the energy is a lot stronger and it can promote a greater healing so what are the first three things that Reiki does does anybody know the first thing is it relaxes the body it causes the person to become very relaxed now make sure that they are comfortable because they will never become relaxed if they're sitting laying on a bump or they're cold or they or they don't trust you or feel uncomfortable you have to talk to them a little bit beforehand and let them know what you're going to be doing how you're going to be touching them there's not going to uh, Reiki is not a sexual uh, thing at all I mean of course it can heal things in the sexual body part of the body but you don't go and touch it um, you let the energy go near it or you hold your hands over it but um, it it is to relax the body first of all second of all it opens the body up the energy fields like I said going around the energy fields to begin with is a wonderful thing and second and as you're doing the healing it's opening up those energy fields even more and more but if you give it a great first start going around the body it does a great job of just clearing out blockages that normally might be tough to get out because 
let me explain. Does everybody know what a blockage is? An energy blockage? What? How they come? What happens? Anybody? No. Okay. Say you are someone that works in an office, and you're sitting eight hours a day. Your energy fields are going to be blocked in some ways because you're not moving. See, not moving is unnatural. If you're sitting like this all day long, you're going to get blockages in your lower back, your shoulders. You're going to a blockage because sometimes you you're looking down at what you're doing in the neck, in the in the. They can happen anywhere because your energy's not flowing. Any time that you run into a case where there's a lot of time spent sitting, energy stops flowing really well. You have to open the open the body up for that because you are you're you're restricting the flow of energy that should come naturally, which is standing and moving. Um, sitting is actually, for a long period of time, is unnatural. So you're blocking your body's places in some places. So you'll need to go around and remove, you know, get that energy moving around so that they can heal better. Another thing that causes blockages is a trauma to an area. Like somebody banged their elbow. Ah! and they have a black and blue mark. In that area, there is an energy blockage. Why? Because it was traumatized. Even though it was shortly, the energy go doesn't flow through there as quickly as it did before because there's pain and there's a lot of different stuff going there. And when there's that much, and any place that there is severe pain, you know that the energy is not going there properly because if it was moving in in the way it should, it should start to heal that pain, give the flow of blood, get the oxygen all going and everything. So a lot of times when people are in severe pain, the place where they're in severe pain usually needs a blockage release. So if you go around the body first and help the, the flow, Whenever you're doing the Reiki, it's much easier to release those blockages. Is there any questions about that? That's a really important thing because people will be going. People will tell you that. Oh, go ahead. Um, what about like emotional blockages? Oh yes, there are emotional blockages too, which going around the energy field does help. Uh, move all that energy because all your all emotions, spirit, body, your mind, they're all they all have an energy flow, and they all actually work one with another. So if if you have an energy block on one place, it's bound to affect the others as well. Because when you're in severe pain, does that not block your uh, emotions as well? It helps to. It's like oh. That's it. It brings upon, uh, brings out an emotional response. It brings the spirit down. All these things are connected. So yes, excellent question. When you're going around, intend that you're opening all the energy fields, mentally, physically, spiritually, whatever it is. All these are tied together because, like I just said. If you're hurting in one place, there'll be an energy block, there'll be an emotional response, and it'll bring down your spirit. Do you understand that? Is, does that make sense? Yes, completely. Yes, completely. And you so you are. Ask, are oh, I'm sorry, Jim. Oh, go ahead. Did you simply ask, ask a person, a person mm -hmm. what brought them there, if there's any pain, and do you ever ask them what they do for a living to try to get an idea of what might be a blockage? Uh, yes, actually, um, I'll I'll be honest with you. I'm very intuitive about that. I can touch their body and know what they do for a living, pretty much. But not everybody can do that. So, um, yes, I do talk to them beforehand. But there came to a point when I can I when I touch somebody, I'm, I'm going, 
this person is on their feet 24-7. They're uh, prioritizing all the time. They're doing this. Uh, and I'll just say, are you a doctor or a nurse? And, and usually that's someone who prioritizes constantly is in the medical field because they have to make sure that the, the right person is being treated at the right time and all that time. And um, uh, what was the question again? <laughs> Well, just to add that, do you, well, tip it, so in other words, you intuitively, and I think I think many of us as, as empaths intuitively will know, um, and I've been getting that message from Usui himself here doing this throughout this whole Reiki session, that yes. you guys are going to know intuitively, but for just in general, do, would you is, normally ask somebody what they do for a living, or exactly. are you in pain? Exactly. Well, the first thing you do, you see, if you if you have a Reiki business and you someone brand new is coming in, you're going to say, "Hi, how are you today?" And you know, how did you hear about me? And um, what is it that you need today? And what do you do for a living? And you have, you know, um, wow, that's a nice shirt or whatever. You know, you, you make them feel as relaxed and calm as possible because you really care about their healing. You want them to feel relaxed. So, yes, I start off, but as, like I said, as soon as I touch them, I know intuitively other things. There's other things that, they, that comes to me. But, of course, and when they get on the table, make sure that they take their shoes off and make sure it's best if they close their eyes. Now some people will not close their eyes right away because they're like I don't know what's happening so um, you can ask them to close their eyes and just relax and, that, and tell them some of the things that you'll be doing. That's another thing I do is before I even work on them I'll say is it all right if I can touch you? And if I do, I'm going to be using acupressure and uh, and Reiki at the same time. I I do not press hard, so it's it's very easy. But if there's any place on your body that's overly sensitive, please let me know now so that I don't touch it. Like some people have overly sensitive feet, or they don't want you to touch their head or whatever. So, but relax them as much as possible. Put something under their knees cover them with a blanket if they need, or if they say, oh, it's so hot in here, turn on the air, give them a fan, whatever it, whatever it takes to get them comfortable. And let, them, and let them know that you're doing everything in your power to make them comfortable. And I'd also tell them, if you need to move, if you need to move your back or arms or whatever, Feel free to do that because the energy will continue to flow uh, as you adjust yourself. It's best if you're comfortable. If you are not comfortable, the energy will not flow as well and you will not get as good a healing if you are uncomfortable. That's all there is to it. If you're uncomfortable, that's what you're going to be thinking about. You're not going to be thinking about healing your back. You're going to be thinking, oh, I'm so uncomfortable. So, and you're not going to get a good healing. Believe it or not, Reiki can soothe that kind of pain as well. Has anybody had any experience with that? I have. I've also had people with hips that the bone is grinding against the bone. And uh, now I employ my own, I see I use alien Reiki for that, galactic Reiki for that, because... Galactic Reiki is much more uh, powerful for that kind of thing than just regular Asui Reiki. And so I asked, I talked to Tepet and Takur and, and different uh, aliens and things to help me with that because they can give me a little assistance with that kind of pain. So, but I do use, Reiki can still help it, yes. I have a, a client that is has pain all over their body and she comes to she whenever she comes to me she goes tell ask to Pat to help me today and give me a long lasting uh, healing or pain relief so that I can go for 
like a week or two without feeling this pain. So that is how I employ the galactic Reiki is with that kind of pain. Right, right. Because it is bone against bone and that's very difficult for regular Reiki to just handle. But regular Reiki can handle it. All the aliens really do, or the galactic Reiki does, is enhance the energy and gives them a very small protective layer of liquidy kind of something in between the bone and the bone where the cartridge is totally gone. If you ask and intend for Reiki to do something, it will work. Now, um, I use the Galactic Reiki for a... Oh, it gives you a greater long-lasting healing from that pain. Now, it doesn't totally heal it completely because they can't put cartilage in there. We can intend for the cartilage to return, but that takes time because they have to uh, go to the blueprint of the body and create it from there. But you know, anything is possible with Reiki. Cancer has been cured, um, all kinds of cancer actually, uh, all kinds of uh, things removed from the body that weren't supposed to be there, diseases, viruses, germs, bacteria, um, and kidney stones crumbled. Uh, you know, it's amazing with your intention if, and with their intention as well. You see, you're mixing your energy with their energy, and God's energy, as I described, Ray is all, uh, the divine energy and the divine wisdom and the key is the body, energy of the body, they work together and with your intentions all set in alignment, everybody on the same page, you get a much stronger healing and can do much greater kinds of healing. And also your belief system comes into that. You can believe that these things are happening and they can happen. It, Lewis, I think that you're one that actually goes in there and believes that this can happen and so it does. It goes in there and you 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 see it and you believe it and it happens. Know that it works. It does work. So um, I heard Max saying that uh, that when he works on me he has to ask me to lower my vibration <laughs> or something like that. I'm not sure what he exactly he said. But um, he's, the, he's an amazing uh, uh, worker as well and his energy is every bit as strong as mine when he intends it to be so that's that's just what it is thank you you're welcome I did so, I just did, did I go over that good enough yes yes thank you yes that was really good hey Jim uh, I just had a question about since you brought up belief systems I just wanted to ask you about and maybe this is getting a little too deep for right now, but when a person manifests something, obviously it's we always are manifesting something because of some sort of maybe a agreement or, or some sort of a belief system. So, you know, how deep does that go with this as far as, okay, if you have, so say you've got the cartilage on cartilage, and I've been in that physical situation myself, so I, I understand how much of a part I played in that and I, and I and I own it and I get that and right. that was actually integral in my healing was owning that and correct but where does that begin and end with a with with us um, all of us as far as our belief systems and creating that that scenario to begin with and do you know what I mean yes where do you get that that confidence to believe is that what you're saying? Yeah, because I mean, if you created a situation where you've got that knee problem, um, and then, um, you know, obviously your belief system had something to do with creating that to begin with. So then, are you also then um, kind of um, <laughs> healing your belief system in also the fact that you can, say, for example, rebuild the cartilage? Um, you know, yeah. and then how does that how does that correspond to the reason you decided to have the knee problem to begin with? I guess 
okay, what is happening is you go through your life, you go through different parts of your life, you have different, your belief system is always changing, no matter what you think. One day you believe that this is the right person for the job, and then the next day you don't. This day you believe that you can be healed, this day you don't, you just don't feel it. But let me tell you, as you go through your life, you collect your belief system, and then you as life goes on, you gain things and you get rid of things, and it's always changing. Maybe not a lot, but it's always you. You're just like going to hot springs when we had all that energy there. Your belief system changed. It couldn't help but to because the energy made you believe something different. So, what happened is you might have put yourself in a belief system that caused the pain. But you also can correct that he, that belief system so that you can heal the pain. You'll say, I don't believe that way anymore. And you can correct that. You don't have to believe the same thing yesterday as you believe today. I mean, if you're stable, you probably will. But, uh, <laughs> but if you actually found some reason to believe differently and know that you can heal this pain from the past, from the past, because that past belief system was in charge, but now this belief system is in charge, and this belief system is a lot stronger, or is a lot more positive, or is a lot more loving, or is a lot more connected in many ways, then yes, correct that old belief system, and be confident that what you believe now is not the same as what you believe then to cause it. Does that make sense? That was the absolute perfect answer. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Any other questions right now? Well, if you're sick, I would say uh, call off your Reiki sessions for that day of because course. you don't want to. You don't want to give that to anybody else. But you may. The chances are giving them to somebody else when you're trying to heal them are small. However, that may not be their belief system. They may be going. Oh, so um, no, if you're sick, I wouldn't recommend healing because people are going to not be confident with what you're doing because of how you look and feel. <coughs> and it is important that your client patient is confident and relaxed with the way you are. If you're coughing and hacking while you're you're doing a Reiki session, it's not going to work very well because oh, they're going to hear all that. They're going to be, Neh. no, you want to be well, you want to be balanced, and you want your uh, client to be confident that they're not going to get sick from you by coming to try to get well from you. <laughs> okay, let's go back to my class last week where I said to prepare before you do a Reiki healing. But you're Get your energy fields together. Remember this? Yes. And um, make sure that your your energy fields are balanced, that you are calm and relaxed, that you do a small meditation that calms you out and, and uh, ask God for, the, uh, for whatever it is you need that day. Some people are, uh, you know, are in some pain. It's all right to do a Reiki session if you have some pain. However, that be that preparation time is to help you to balance and prepare as much as you can to help them and put your all your positive energy into both of you, of course, and keep your positive energy up and to help heal this other person. If you are in too much pain to do that, then don't do it. But that pain is not going to transfer to them. If your intention is to heal them and bring in healing energy through your body, it's going to start to heal you as well. But I'm going to tell you that uh, you can, don't transfer your pain to them. Just intend that you are going to have a wonderful healing time. But if it's too much pain, I wouldn't do it because your concentration will be... A lower you you won't be able to uh, think of which symbol should go where and if you're in too much pain it's just not worth it 
But yes, I have physical problems. I have eye matters, and I have other things in my body that are um, that are not quite kosher. But I but I feel great. The thing is, I don't transfer them to any of my clients or patients. My intention is for their healing, for the energy that's coming through me to be pure and clean, for the energy that I le that leaves my body to be pure and clean and to heal them. So if you feel comfortable enough to do a healing Reiki session, then do so. But prepare yourself first with meditation and with uh, balance and uh, hook up your... Uh, energy field and make sure you're you're in good shape I wanted to comment um, just my experience um, confirming what you said you know I, I feel sick most of the days if I don't feel sick I'm not alive so uh, I have pain going all, all over the place and uh, different sicknesses come and popping in uh, last night I felt like sneezing like in the evening it was like completely like back pain plus sneezing and and by the time I up, fixed, I prayed. I intended to be healed by the by the session by the by the class. And when I woke up, it was all fixed. So, so understand the miracles happen. And for the Reiki session, uh, yeah, both are good. Either canceling my my other friend cancels about fifty percent of your appointments, and feels just fine about it. The rest of it she does. Miracles, she does miracles, but but um, taking care of your health and canceling things is permitted, especially if you do it proper way and remember stuff and don't forget. But other uh, other belief is that by the time of the session you will be healed, and actually after the session you will be healed too is also a belief which helps. It works. Yes. I know if I go and do it on others, I will be just fine for that time and for hours after that. I uh, will be in uh, one shape and in the boost. Right. If your intention is to so heal, if your intention, yeah, if you want to heal somebody else and that's your highest excitement, you will be able to and you will be able to uh, prepare yourself in a way that will make you uh, a good healer. It just will happen. Your intention is very important. And, um, let them know that they are part of the healing too. Their energy is helping too. So put their, get their mind going. You're, you're helping me heal you. So wherever the healing is needed, let the let the energy flow. So let's make sure that everyone's doing on the same page. They may not know the symbols or thought processes behind Reiki, but they can actually just say. I want to be healed. I want the, this healing. I really would. That is my highest intention right now. So, and it's a beautiful thing. It really helps. Now, there are those that will lose track. They'll be sleepy and fall asleep or lose track because the first thing that Reiki does is relax you very much. And so they may lose focus. But if they started off with the intention of healing, that w that's a beautiful thing and will help. Fantastic. Thank you for the clarification. Oh, no. Wait, I think you're asking what happens when they go away and they're not intending to heal themselves anymore? Yeah. Is that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah. Uh, if, if they started off with the intention of healing and then they fade away because they got so relaxed, it's fine. Because what has happened is they already set their intention ahead of time. You have set your intention. You're doing your work. They are becoming relaxed. What does relaxation do? Relaxation helps people to get into a healing mode. What, what happens when you're sick? They tell you to go home and get lots of rest. That's what Reiki does is put you in that restful, relaxing frame so that you can promote the healing of the whatever it is that's wrong. So when they become relaxed like that, you're in a perfect place to send as much energy as possible through that person and to the places that need healed and it is an amazing thing I've had people fall asleep on the table and 
when they woke up, they felt like, oh, my God, I feel so great and good because the more relaxed you are on the table, the more relaxed your patient is on the table, the greater amount of healing that's able to be done even though they're not aware of it. So it's it's a beautiful thing. I when I realize my patient is almost asleep, I'm that's when I'm doing all my breathing exercises to bring more energy in, to make sure that all parts of the body are being uh, paid attention to. I'm always saying healing and pain relief in my mind. I'm always saying that in my mind. I don't know. That's not part of Reiki, but as I'm doing my Reiki, I'm going healing and pain relief healing and pain relief, oh, bring energy here. You know, I'm constantly in contact with spirit and with the body, and it's uh, it, it makes the time go really fast. It's not like you're watching the clock going, oh, ten more minutes. Oh. No, you uh, energize yourself and become interested in the actual healing so that it's exciting. Like, you're, you're actually performing this... Uh, medical procedure because that's what you're doing don't don't think that you're not you are actually doing something helpful for to their person and Reiki does work well with medications now if if somebody comes and say I'm on this medication that medication don't be frightened Reiki energy works with all medications and don't tell them oh don't use that medicine or that medicine. Let them, their doctor do it. You could get yourself into a lot of trouble if you start telling them what to use and what not to use. The only thing you do, energy healing. You do not tell them what medications to use or not to use or whatever. If they stop taking a medication and then have a bad reaction, they can come back to you. So... Just um, just use the energy. It works with all medications, no matter what they are. And so energy and medications work together very well. In fact, energy makes medication work better. Did you ever hear that? What happens, I know many, many people that are Reiki healers that take medication before they take their medication, they Reiki all the bottles. They Reiki the pills and say, please work better for me. Please uh, come into my body in a safe way. Please, all these things. And their medications work better. It's amazing. But your intention on energizing your medication works very well. Is there any questions? Jim, I just you wanted to comment. Crystals? Can you energize crystals to help you towards Reiki? Yes. You can energize a crystal with Reiki, of course. I just, wanted, I just wanted to comment that uh, there is a medical profession, but there is also uh, spiritual work, and we are on the spiritual side. Yes. And we are protected by the uh, Western beautiful Western religion and spirituality. So that's where we work on. We are, we are healing with the spirit. Yes. yes. Exactly. Yes, it was mentioned, Ray, the first part of Reiki, Ray is the power and wisdom of God. So yes, we are working with spiritual energy. No question. Okay. Any other questions? If not, I'm going to remember where I left off with Reiki last time is we were just, I had just finished showing all the hand positions and we really sort of had to stop after that. But before I end a Reiki session, I usually smooth them out and I'll show you what that means. I'll, I'll, I, I hold on. Can you see the table? Oh, here it goes. Pretend there's a body here. When I'm getting finished with a Reiki session, 
before I let them go, I do a couple things. I I smooth out their aura. After they had a good, nice a Reiki session, pretend there's a body right here. I take my hands and I move over the body and you can feel the energy when you're doing this that you have to smooth the aura out a little bit. All up and down the body, you don't touch it. <laughs> but you can feel where there's little bumps and things in the energy, you're just smoothing it out. And it doesn't matter how you use your hands to smooth it out, it you will feel it. It will feel you will feel the energy over their body in their oral aura field. And so you just smooth it out. And the last thing to do before they get off the table is say this. You you can touch them on the arm or the leg or some people I will touch on the stomach and say the bond between me and thee is broken now why would you say that anybody have any ideas well just so to break, maybe the energy. break away from the energy from their healing okay and let me tell you that you're using energy to heal it's divine energy it's coming through it's moving all around but you want to break that energy flow and the reason is there are some people out there that can continue to take your energy as they leave so you want to make sure that energy is broken so if some people become extremely drained it was because they didn't break the energy field between them and the client and that person is still using their energy still still taking it do you understand what I'm saying but if you block if you break it intentionally then it stops and there they can go on their way with all the wonderful energy that they they got and it will still continue to work but they're not uh, they're not sucking any more of your energy away from you does that make sense yes do you say it out loud all right. Okay, and there are such things as energy vampires out there too. So always break your connection. Always break your connection. So Do to you make say it out loud, for your own safety, that's what it really is. Because some people can, there's they have strong systems and can draw your energy no matter where they are if you haven't broken it. All right then, I'm no, going to show you a couple of symbols. Uh, I'm going to. I'll be stopping at around 2:30 because we have to do the attunements after that. So I have a little. I have a little less than a half an hour to go. But I wanted to uh, do some training on one breathing technique and one symbol. I know you heard me talk about the ruch, R O K K. Um, it is a symbol that I think should be taught in Reiki 1 because it's a protection symbol. It was a, it's also a galactic symbol. It's if you feel great negativity coming from your client or patient or you feel some feel uncomfortable with their energy that's coming out of them towards you. See, you are trying to put energy into them, but sometimes when the, you get them on the table, you feel their energy coming out toward you. And it might not be comfortable. It not might not be a beautiful energy, and that's when the, the ruch is um, used. It stops the energy from coming out of them, and lets you just or it blocks it from you. It might still come out of them, but it it blocks you from receiving it. Probably goes out to the sides or something, but. Here's what it looks like on paper, and then I will show it to you in the air. It's actually very, very simple. Let me go back. It's actually just two pyramids, if you can see that, sort of. 
You start up here, you go down and across. Then you start up here at the, the top of the pyramid again and go down and across. And then you start at the bottom and you go up like you're making uh, a pyramid and across. And then you come up down at the bottom of the pyramid and across. What this does is makes two pyramids, one on top of the other, and they block the energy that's coming out of the person. Now, I'll show you on the paper again. Is that understandable? Can you see that? It's called the Roch. Or the arrow. Or to block energy coming out of your client. If you find that there's negative or unpleasant or uncomfortable energy coming from them, you can block it. And then you can continue to do a healing on them. Now, the other way to take care of that is if you have someone that has a lot of uncomfortable or negative energy coming, you can stop working on them. That is another option. But if you use the Ruch, you will stop that from coming out of them, and you will be able to still work. And if you still feel the energy after you do the Ruch, which you shouldn't, I would stop because that's pretty strong energy. I've used that a couple times already, and it was like, oh, wow, that's a major difference. It works very, very well. It's it's like I don't, you don't feel anything after that. Nope. Jim, can you hear us? I can't hear anybody. That's the problem. <laughs> Maybe his speaker's off. Uh, that's a spiritual thing. But it is fixable. Spiritual but fixable. <laughs> All right, I'm going to restart my computer then. Okay, Jim got the message by Skype. He will restart the computer. All right. All right, questions. You asked uh, uh, the separation thing. Um, it's what, did, what does he say? He says, uh, the bond between you and uh, me is broken, right? Uh, yeah, they say it out loud. And I always laugh when Jun wants to break the bond between me and him, which is funny. He doesn't really mean it. <laughs> Any more questions? <laughs> Any questions? Uh, uh, other crises, like sometimes some people like with bad sicknesses or with bad um, depressions or with bad um, anger, uh, fears, they kind of bring that to you, but you have to like learn how to disconnect from that. Like that would be for me a symbol for that. You use right hand to block the negativity, you use left hand to send the healing. That's that simple. Like I don't take any pain, but I still give you the healing. And again, if you feel that there is a, a flow coming to you of negativity, my gracefully turn and disconnect. So when you change the position, just turn and that, and then, uh, you intend to disconnect, and then do your meditation outside of that connection, and then come back with understanding. A child, even of the in most negative of the, of the people. So even, th I would say, the most negative of the people, they need most of the healing, and the healing that you do to them will be most efficient because you heal their negativity, you give them understanding. Because when you connect, your experiences, your experience connects to their experience. And if you, even if you don't say a word, they get your perspective on that, your perspective. So I notice even of the... Negative people say negative things to, things to me, and I don't say a word. I just, I don't even say a word in my mind. But I have an understanding and non-judgmental judgment. How do you say? Non-judgmental evaluation of the situation, analysis, non-judgmental analysis. I understand what's happening, and that understanding is transferred to them. Sometimes they get even more angry, but they get the healing, they get the understanding. Hey, Jim, can you hear us? Hi, Jim. 
<sighs> hear us? Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. We can hear you. Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Yes. Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear us? Yes. Wonderful. Oh. Hi, Jim. But you can't, now you can't hear me, right? We no, all yes, 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 can. can you hear me? Yes. yes. All right, then we're fine. That was a nice... Jim, that was a nice vacation. Did some scuba diving. <laughs> bought a bathing suit. <laughs> Had a nice drink with some friends. Um, all right. What was the last thing you heard, Jim? My question is: Is Roke symbol four lines or two lines? Four. It's like this. It comes down and across. Are you? Okay, can you see that? Wait a minute. Hold on. It comes down, across, down, across, and then up, across, and up, across. It looks like two pyramids, one upside down, one right side up. Do you see, like, do you, uh, do you uh, see it, Rook? And do it, or you just don't. I just do it. I just okay. do the sign right over their body. They have no idea what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and most of the time, 99.9% .9 of the time, their eyes should be closed, and they won't see that symbol anyway. Right, I see. All right, where did I leave off? It's almost time to do the. Uh, well, let's do the Hengisen. This is a breathing. This is a breathing uh, mechanism because there are some people that have extreme pain. Usually, when somebody comes to a Reiki session, they're not in extreme pain because they won't leave their house if they are. But sometimes they'll get to the Reiki session and have an extreme pain, like in the middle of their back or whatever. You can do the Hengisen or or Hegesen, or Hengesen, however you want to pronounce it. There's two pronunciations. What it is, it's, it's, a, it's a breathing uh, technique. I'll let you write that down first. Did everybody get that? Yep. Okay. Those are what we're... I'll have someone send those to you. But I, you really can't draw a breathing uh, technique. So I'll tell you what it's like. It's in through the nose, very deeply. Okay, that's the first step. The second is blowing out through the nose just a little, about a second. You can feel a little air come out. And then the last thing is a t at the end of the tongue. So it's... Wait. That's it. It's hard to do at first. I had to practice it. But it's for somebody with severe pain. You do that three times and their pain starts subsiding. I never had to use it, so I don't know how well, well it works, but that was given to me by Takur, and it's called the Henga. Sin or Hega Sen. Did everybody get that? It's so can you so you breathe in through the nose deeply and then you breathe out a tiny bit through your nose. Yes. You don't want to blow stuff out, but it you have to blow some of the air out. And I don't know what the the reason for that is. But that is what they showed me to do. And obviously they've had, you will, probably won't have to use that very often. <clears throat> but it is something to keep in your arsenal. Learn it. I, I have to practice it even more because I've never had to use it. But so it's then you really, push the air out through your lips then after the rest of the air through your lips, right? Like a, It's in and then a little out through the nose and then... Okay. 
and you do that three times. So it's a very interesting. Uh, it's a galactic symbol, also like the Rook. So I brought that into the class one because if that ever happens, you'll know, you see that's sort of an emergency tool. But it's nice to it's nice to have an emergency tool of that nature. So, <coughs> is there any questions so far? I think pretty soon we're going to have to do the attunements before we run out of time. But I uh, thank goodness we got through the rest of the treatment and through the couple symbols. There's a lot more stuff, but it's more just textbook kind of things. I think the attunement is a lot more important. Could what I do you ask think? a question? What? Of the uh, topics to be presented, uh, control versus transparency. I didn't. I didn't hear the question. I'm sorry. Control. That's the question to me. Control versus transparency. Basically, your male principle. You do uh, doing the healing. And transparency, like you, you are transparent to the energy. You, you are channel, clear channel. So either you channel the energy or you add your intention. Right. So there's a two, and you shift between one first and second. Either you actively healing or you, you channel the, the the energy through. Okay. And both are both are important. I I would say it this way. Um, the control belongs to the energy. You're letting the energy have more control. Your transparency is that you're using the symbols, you're ramping up the energy, you're doing all the intents. That's where you're transparent and that you're really caring about how well the the uh, client is healed. But in con your control is the energy. The energy is actually what is in control. You're letting it flow you're letting it go you're letting it be what it is and you're guiding it pretty much and so that's the most control you have over the energy except for your breathing techniques once you learn them eventually can ramp up your uh, the flow of energy and things of that nature but at this point the energy is in control and you're just guiding it to the places on the body that it needs to go and I Hello? Yeah, I understand. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, is there any more questions before we start to do some of the attunements? Or I'm going to bring uh, some someone in to do the attunements today. Uh, just start to ask um, before you start if you could go over what attunements are and what the four. Um, Did, uh, did you what, hear? What is the purpose no. of the attunements? What's the purpose of the attunements? Oh, the one, the Hengisen? What is the purpose? What is the purpose of the attunements? Yes. Oh. What the the attunements are to um, seal in uh, healing energy into your being, to ramp up the energy, to make it stronger in you, to uh, Bring make your intentions stronger to be a greater healer. To um, I, what else would it be, Max? That was that's. What I you're... I say it is uh, it is a way of introduction. Uh, the teacher introduces the student to the healing spirit of Reiki. Yes, that's true. It introduces you to the energies of healing. It really does. Thank you. You're welcome. I say go ahead. Thank you. I say go ahead and do the do the next part. Should we do the attunements now? Sounds good. Sure. Okay, good. Yes. Hey Jim, before you go, just yes. at some point, could you show us that rock again, the rook rock uh, symbol oh, yeah. again, please? Oh, sure, sure. Thank you. It's two pyramids, one on top of each other. Can you see that fine? 
Yes, I just wanted to see which way the directions were going. Um, they go like this and like this. Okay, so down, like that and like and that. Across. And then the bottom one. Could you hold it up just a little bit higher? Okay, there we good? go. So now I can see that one, and then that one goes that way. That goes that way. Okay. Yeah, because I can do this one real fast now because it's just... Okay. That's it. Thank you. It's very easy. It's not very hard at all, but yet it's very powerful to block anything negative coming out of them. So it's very nice because otherwise you'd have to stop. You know what I mean? And you, if you really want to do the, a good healing, you don't really want to stop. So. so those negative energy from your patient is like uh, un... What is it? Unintentional from the them? I mean, like not, they're not. Not necessarily. Let me explain that a little better. I thank you for asking that question, because when somebody might come in, they just had an argument for, with their wife or something, or they just had a bad day at the office, or. They're feeling grouchy because they're not feeling really well. And those are the kinds of things that can come out of them towards you, at you. And that's not necessarily intentional, but it is there because of what kind of day or what, how they're feeling or whatever. So you can just block all those out so that you can give them a better healing. I'm sure those of you who've had, who do Reiki already have had someone come in that's sort of grouchy because they're, they're feeling really not so good. And or they had a bad day or whatever, they just had a fender bender and they're all yeah. So just block that out so that you're not bothered by it, so that you can do a good healing on them. You know, it's important that you're you don't don't have to deal with that while your intentions are being good and pure. Does that make more sense? Yep. Thank you. So yeah, it's not. It's not necessarily that they're evil or anything like that. Um, it's more that they've had a bad day or an argument or they're just in a negative frame of, of thought. And, you know, when anybody comes in like that, it does rub off on people. So you want to block that. All righty. All right. Let me do the chant and let you go. All right. Allah <laughs> I am Takur. Greetings. Greetings, Takur. I am here to give you your Reiki One attunement. This is a beautiful attunement to let you know that the energies of the universe and God have been bestowed in this particular level of energy healing. Reiki One is the beginning of a journey. It is not the end of the journey, however, unless you want it to be. It does 
increase your healing abilities. It gives you a greater understanding of what healing is and what healing can do from an energy perspective. I just want to thank you for being interested in this form of energy healing because it is important. It does help with the ascension. It brings people into greater thought processes so they might be able to rise a little easier. And if you feel better, you, f you rise in a better way. Now, this is individual attunements. So I will go to each one of you and speak to you. First of all, what you need to know at this point is that I will be behind you and have my hands on your shoulders first. And I will do a small ceremony around the back of your head. You must have your hands in the gossamo position, which is the prayer position like this. The reason for the hands in front of the heart... In front. But, pardon? Yes, the hands will be in front of the heart. I will symbolically raise them up over your head. When I, when I say your name, just raise your hand in this position over your head. Is that understood? When yes. I come yes. around to the front, when I come around to the front, I will ask you to open your hands like so. Can you see this? Yes. Yep. When I say your name around the front of your body, just open your hands thusly. This ceremony, ritual, attunement, is not long. It is actually the shortest of all the attunements, for it is the Reiki 1 attunement. However, you will note that energy will be added to your system. Symbols will be given to you. But there is a mystery of the attunement that will not be shared, but will be felt within your system. Do you understand that? Yes. Very well. One moment, and I will say a small prayer before we start. And then I will start individually to give you your attunements. Please pay close attention to the energy that is around you because this energy will become excited for lack of a better word. Mother, Father, God, we ask that your energies fall upon these students of Reiki 1, Asui. Also, there is some galactic Reiki involved here, and we ask that you bring your blessings to those symbols and those techniques. We pray that you be with them during this time and as they move forward in their journey with Reiki healing, with Reiki energy, with the Reiki thought process, because you will find... As we move forward, as you move forward, your thought processes about healing will change. Your belief systems about what is possible will change. Your thought processes about who you are as a healer may change. We ask you to bless these ones with a special blessing because healing is of a great responsibility. Only bring that which is positive into the field of healing energy, and we thank you for that. And we, thank you for that. we ask that the ask energies that, the energy that they live in, the electromagnetic field, also be part of their healing energy. We ask that all the energies within them, including their psychic and energy flow, work for this Reiki process. We thank you and praise you and ask for guidance for each and every one. They are each individual and special to you. And so now, we bring along the attunement for Reiki 1. 
<clears throat> may it be blessed and used to its fullest capacity. Max, or for your young lady there, I do not know her name. Cassie, Cassie. Kathy, would you put your hands above your head? And Max, you too. I will be with both of you there. I'm giving you the Reiki 1 attunement for the galactic symbols and techniques. And also for the Asui 1 Reiki. You may bring your hands down in front of you now. Wendy, I am behind you. Raise your hands above your head, please. I will give you the Reiki attunements for the galactic symbols and techniques and add the Reiki 1 symbols to you. Mm -hmm. You may bring your hands down. I will come back to you when the others are finished. Keep your hands in the prayer position, please. I am going to come in front of you now. One moment. You may close your palms and keep them in front of you. I have added to you the Reiki symbols, the mystery of the energy of Reiki healing. Feel this energy and use it wisely. Let it flow down over you as the symbols are actually healing you at this time as well. Let them be used to heal others. you may close them back to the prayer position in front of you. I have added onto you the mysteries of the Reiki symbols, the energy thereof. Let them work for you and let them be strength for your healing energy. As they heal you, let them also be used to heal others. Kathleen and Max, is that correct? Yes, thank you. Put your hands out as such. You may close your palms and put them in front of you again. 
I have put in the mystery of the symbols in your hands, the Reiki symbols. As they heal you, let them be used to heal others in the future. Feel the energy come. Wendy, your hands out like so. You may put your hands back together. May the energy of these mystery symbols be with you always. May them help you to be healed and to heal others in the future. Use them well and be blessed. To all, I will give a final blessing and that will be the end of this ritual, this attunement, this enhancement of your Reiki energy. Use it well. One moment. Kiakwata shon shipwata. E yawa yao tatuinyan yukwitya a. O yawa saso sonyatya. Kachyam empuakwati endia tu. Now may the power of Mother, Father, God be with you, bless you, strengthen you, enlighten you, carry you on your way as a, a seed in the wind, that you might be the healer that you want to be, that it may resonate in a high way, that you may be a healer to many people and bring much positivity to the earth positivity to the land and positivity to the psyche of many of those that may be needing help and fall, feeling that there is none for them. This energy is to be used wisely and to be used for all who are in need. Be well. Be well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. I felt a special felt energy a special with each energy. one of you. I hope you felt it as well. It was a very strong moment for me, and thank you for letting me share it with you. It is a, my pleasure and honor to help you along this journey. I am very proud to be a part of this beautiful legacy. Good day. Good day. Thank you, everybody. Oh, that was, she was very moved. Kerr was very moved by your, uh, by uh, whatever she was doing. Any feedback? Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jim. Oh, you're welcome. I hope everybody will um, go to Reiki 2 because it's beautiful and it has a lot more symbols. But um, then you can become a practitioner and actually charge for your Reiki. What you do now is practice a lot and use your Reiki and if they want to give you a donation make sure you accept it why because that is a blessing for you and a blessing for them 
they are giving you a blessing and as they give you a blessing you are also blessed they are also blessed and then what happens they get blessed again because of your happiness so remember whenever someone gives you something it's all always multiple blessings if you receive it does that make sense yes, yes. because then the person that gave the blessing is also blessed so receive receive and give and give be well thank you that was very thank powerful you. Jim thank you thank you to her oh thank yes very she was, much she was very moved yes thank well. you Jim I, I felt I felt her emotion may I say a blessing yes What a yatayana sha. Uta yonu to shun to. Uta yataya. Iyonu to aka. Uta yatiya u to shun to. Uta yataka. Uta nu ku shuan to at Wow. Thank you. Let this, yeah. Let this be the beginning of great healing. Let the light spread out and shine on all. Let all those that are here heal many and let it be a blessing to the world. Be great if you can be great. Believe that you can be and it shall be given because no one was created to be less than great. Wow. Beautiful. Thank you both. Wendy, can you do your part? <sighs> this has been a very special day for all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Max to Kerr. Every blessing. Nyalakisatalikilani <laughs> Ina hilani yana kapala katoruko yanga shashala ini yana kilia dogula hiyana ma wale asasoka shia ma ale asasia halakana yaba hasha wale yana kwa ya ma mana ina ya wakila kwa yana boka liana ya kwa shashana pila mo la asasia hiyana aloku. Ima hiyo lako ya kwa sasaya ya nakiwa aliana kuko hiyo sasaya ima atu ni ima ya lako ya mayu shushar Namaste It has been said that from small things great things can come It has also been said that the light is so great that it cannot be extinguished So therefore be glad at this time that these things are working in your favor. You have come with a small blessing, but it now grows into a greater one. And you have come with small light, and now it has become a sun, a bright light in the universe. You have come as one seeking to be able to do something more, and in doing so, something more will be given. And something more is has been given already. Go forth and share what has been given, for it will multiply and become great, like that which was started as a small thing. But remember this. You are not small, but the thought that it is 
going to be great is the thought that it is already. Is anybody else, um, does anybody else want to give a blessing? Yeah, Go no. ahead. Shin, Shin. Thank you. Shatunia Katu Shoturu, Watu Shinya Tia, Haho Shuru, Ia Naki Tino, Tushi Shishia Tia Tu. Watushana Tutu Kia Kashia Tuola Shini Tia Tuku. Shaiya Uhu Nakta Tu Shuria Ai Nua Tuhu Shatitia U Shatia In every hand there is healing, but now your healing has been enhanced. Your greatness is now greater than it was. The energy that is with you will serve you for positive good if that's what you wish. Much love and energy is going into this beautiful prayer. Bring forth your energies so that many may be helped. Bring forth your energies so that light can be served. Bring forth all that is good and you will be honored. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? You want to go listen? Ayala na ho na ho la randa Ananda ho la ho la randa haina Ura haina ura haina Alahandu anna alahandu anna Ura la haina ura Lahaina Uram Lahaina Have a wonderful day everyone. Thank you for being in class and being so attentive. Much love to you. It was Much really love. nice. Thank, Thank you. you all for the beautiful Thank experience. Much love, Kim. Wow. Nice. Thank you so much. Good to see you. Good to see you all. Thanks. Thank you. Love you all. What is your friend's name? Uh, she, her name is Akiko, my wife. Oh, very beautiful. She's beautiful. So, thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you all. Good day. Thank you. Thank you, Max. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, everyone.